First of all, this headline is absolutely asinine, and it doesn't tell the full story, at least through the rest of the article here. If you need to pose an ultimatum from the outset, that just shows that you have absolutely no power at all whatsoever. And then also, now we can take in proper context what we're going to be talking about. Liz Cheney will campaign for Democrats to leave Republican Party if Trump is the 2024 nominee. It's like, okay, cool. Nobody, nobody wants you. Nobody knew about you. Let's keep it a buck. You were Dick Cheney's bouncing baby girl. And the only reason anybody likes you, knows who the hell you are, is because you voted for Trump's impeachment or, or around January 6th. And now you're the face of bipartisanship on those sham January 6th trials. Like, no, nobody cares. You're gone. You already lost your primary. Okay, you're not going to be around in 2023. So just go away. Go. Leave. Bye. Just switch your party affiliation. Move out of the state. Wyoming's never going to vote for you again. You got absolutely dog walked in that primary election. You are persona non grata. Your type of Republican Party politics, okay, the lose with dignity party, it's gone. It's done. It's dusted. Go see if your your father can somehow f set you up with a board position at Halliburton, okay? And go campaign for Democrats because every endorsement that you put out there as well, you, you just might as well go hang that burden on somebody else's neck. I'm sure you have plenty of arbitrosses. You, or albatross, there's no arbitross, that's a diff different thing. You and Adam Kissinger can just go ahead and put fucking rocks in people's pockets and push them off of a cliff at your leisure because you're gonna have plenty of free time unless of course fox news needs another fucking talking head to go out there for them anyways liz cheney said on saturday that she will not remain a republican of former president donald trump as the gop presidential nominee of the 2024 elections and that she would also be willing to campaign for democrats to stop gop nominee carrie lake that should not that should be another red flag okay that's just good general life advice at the beginning ultimatums are for the weak and powerless and then and also, um, take a look at who these people are pinpointing, and those are the ones that you should be afraid of. Because, hey man, if I'm to put my money down on anything, I'd say that Carrie Lake has a good shot, okay? She has a good shot, if she wants to, if she wants to, if she wants to be the first a female president of the United States. Like, I'm pretty harsh on female politicians. I think that they more or less just lead with their own feminine intuition, which mostly just devolves into collectivism. But Carrie Lakes, she's one of those outsiders, okay? She's definitely one of those exceptions to the rule. And that's what I want in politics for both men and women ugh, to play the disinterest moment for a second, okay? Because your average person is as dumb as a bag of rocks, okay? They're unexceptionable. They're unexceptional for a reason. And that's totally fine, okay? You can go and the world needs ditch diggers too, you know? That's all fine and well, okay? But people who are in power, okay? The enlightened folks that are supposed to be there representing the will of the constituency i want those to be the best of society not the people who want to be in these positions because mostly the people that want to be in the, these positions just want the power associated with the positions okay carrie lake she is very well spoken she has a bunch of based fucking policies and that would be something uh, somebody who i would be unironically willing to cast my vote for for president and hey man god willing if i get a couple of breaks and find myself in the united states because because again, trying to legally immigrate into the United States, not coming through the southern border, which, hey man, we got a couple more years before that ends up getting shorn up. Might have to take them up on that opportunity, but in the 2028 or 2032 election, she might very well be on the ballot, mostly because she pisses off the right people, and I appreciate that. But not people on the right, though. People on the right, and at least the good ones, the ones that, you know, I would lump into the category of decent politicians, which is very, very small, very, very small, including everybody in the world. It's like her, DeSantis, Trump, that's about it, okay? Everybody else is on fucking sketchy ground, at least in my opinion. Cheney, who has been called a Republican in name only, only it's called a rhino. It's a rhino. Just it, she's, She resembles it in politics and in physical stature by others in her party and lost her Republican primary to Trump back challenger Harriet Hageman in August made the comments to the Texas a Tribune Festival in Austin. So funny, so funny. She's from Wyoming, right? The, allegedly, that's where she carpet bagged to. That's fine. Okay, and then she's speaking at a festival in Texas in Austin. That should tell you all that you need to know. I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure Carrie Lake is not ex not elected. That's nice. A politician from Wyoming speaking in Texas at 
the California of Texas about a gubernatorial candidate in Arizona. Okay, cool. Just stop. Just stop talking about Carrie. She's not going to date you. Shut up, Les. Former television anchor Lake, who is endorsed by Trump, won the Republican nomination in the Arizona primary election in August. Yeah, the person that Liz Cheney wanted, um, what's her name? Karen, yeah, Karen Taylor Robeson. Yeah, she just lost by the skin of her snatch. Just real tough loss, okay? Even Mike Pence decided to roll out for that. Old neocons, BTFO'd, love to fucking see it. Uh, when asked by the Texas Tribune CEO, Evan Smith, you can hear the lisp in the air. Uh, whether doing everything she can to ensure the lake is not elected, including campaigning for Democrats. And again, Katie Blobs is on the other side of that ballot in Arizona for the gubernatorial election. Yeah, no fucking way. That was the bitch who railroaded the Maricopa County recount at every single fucking turn. Fuck her. Cheney simply stated, yes. So just, just flip your party affiliation at this point. Everybody knows it, okay? So just cut the shit. Cut the shit, you cantankerous cow. But let's see what's actually going to be on the ballot this time around, okay? Because we're going to have a bunch of rhinos and a bunch of disaffected never-Trumpers. I'm leaving the Republican Party. Good, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. The substantial ass on the way out. But what's actually going to be on this ballot here in 2024? We got a whole bunch of ballot measures, which is funny because, again, oh, in 2020, there were a couple ballot measures, ones that immediately stick out into my mind. Uh, trying to get rid of... Or rather, yeah, no, trying to get rid of discrimination laws on the books when it comes to hiring in California. Thankfully, that failed. Because, again, then you just start to get people where, where you know, we don't need to hire any straight white males. Because, again, you know, that's exactly where that would devolve. That's just fucking weird. Well, that would be on the ballot. But then again, another one that sticks out in my mind, which is just done at gangbusters for Oregon, was a decriminalizing all drugs, hard drugs, soft drugs, everything that you want. And it's worked out real fucking well, especially for Co Portland, which is still being rided on a regular fucking basis. Just go check Andy Noe's social media feed for proof of concept on that one. But what's going to be around this time? Okay, abortion, marijuana, and slavery. 11 themes, the 2022 ballot measures. Which, this is going to be stuff that's not going to be on everybody's ballot, okay? It's going to be down ballot issues, and they're going to be strangely worded in some situations, okay? Like, another one that pops to mind as well is the unionization of, this was in California as well, and thankfully that one failed, unionization of kind of, Oh, specifically for Lyft and Uber drivers, but it would be interjecting collectivist politics into the gig economy, which is something that nobody needs. That would be another story for another day. But if it even failed in California, it just goes to show you how important wording of ballot measures is on the ballots. Don't know if they have that down specifically, but we have at least got the issues. Ballot measures related to abortion, marijuana, and slavery are among the diverse array of issues that voters in 37 states will decide at the polls this fall. Taxes and infrastructure bonds, crimes, minimum wage elections, and the structure of state governments are also among common themes on November 8th's ballots nationwide. Expect a flurry of measures related to sports betting. Yeah, and ranked uh, voting failed to qualify for the midterm elections. Oh, oh, okay. And there are relatively few related to firearms, Medicaid expansion, which are also, oh, which have also been common ballot issues over the past decade. So sports betting and ranked voting. Ranked voting is fucking AIDS, okay? Because again, that's the reason Sarah Palin isn't in that, or didn't win that special election out there in Alaska. She won the largest percentage of the vote, okay? But again, ranked voting is everybody can, everybody that qualifies onto the ballot, okay? It doesn't matter when it comes to party politics or anything like that, which is totally fucking stupid. Oh, no, right. Sarah Palin finished second behind the Democrat, the only Democrat that was on the ticket. Weird about that. But no, it, the way that it worked out, thanks to ranked choice voting, you had a Democrat and then you had two Republicans. OK, a spoiler conservative or a trad con rather endorsed, endorsed fucking establishment hack. OK, threw a bunch of money at that one campaign just to play spoiler for the other Republican that was on there. And then by the skin of her clit, managed to fucking make it through and be a Democrat in Alaska. That's where ranked choice voting ends up getting you. If somebody wants to play spoiler in a certain election, okay, just have an outside actor come through, win 33% of the vote, and then just have the 
establishment candidate and then the other candidate fight it out for the other 50 percent but then nobody quite get past the threshold of the third and ends up winning the ranked choice ballot which is exactly the type of shit that you end up with if you put it on a large enough scale that's why canada is run by 33 percent of the vote and justin trudeau's in charge works out real fucking well so if anybody who backs ranked choice voting is either ignorant to what it actually is or is just a bad faith actor. Just saying. And then sports betting, uh, all fucking gambling is haram, so fuck off. Five abortion related measures, five to seek to legalize recreational marijuana. And again, you guys probably know my opinion on that. Drugs and gambling and all that shit is just a fucking sedative for your life. And no successful people fucking do that. And don't give me the Joe Rogan shit. Because again, one outlier doesn't disprove the fucking rule. Why would you want to put an impediment in front of your success? Just go ahead. Just, just smoke and drink and fucking eat to excess. You can just go ahead and do whatever you want. Less competition for me. Good. And for formally banning slavery as punishment. Okay, cool. Kamala Harris down bad at the moment. Are among 129 constitutional amendments to be decided. Let's take a look. So abortion. On November 8th, abortion will be on the ballot in five states. With California, what, enshrining it all the way up until kindergarten? Vermont. That'll be interesting how that'll go. And Michigan voters seeking proposals to enshrine abortion access to those in Montana and Kentucky seeing proposals to curb it. Yeah, Montana will be pretty much... Yeah, no, no, that's fine. The only way that you can kill your kid is if you just lead, or just let him off the leash and just let him troll the wilderness, so that'll be fine. And Kentucky, I don't see that one working out well. I, it'll be interesting. Kansas rejected a proposal on August 2nd. Yeah, that one was weirdly on some primary ballots. Yeah, and it was weird. And it was also worded incredibly fucking difficultly to properly comprehend. Uh, to remove abortion access in their state constitution. And again, abortion on, like... A wide scale is not all that popular, okay? Like, it's a fringe issue. It's a fringe issue in deep blue cities, so... This whole push to get behind this and to make uh, to make the midterms a referendum on abortion is not going to work out well for Democrats. I don't know why they continue to push that. I've looked at it. We've seen the documents. Anyways, uh, the Michigan and Kentucky measures will be the most watched. Yeah, the Michigan one. Okay, proposed the her Michigan right to reproductive freedom. Yes, the right to kill babies ab amendment. Uh, measure would create the state's constitutional right to make and uh, effectuate decisions about all measures uh, related to pregnancy, including but not limiting, limited to contraception, sterilization, all right, and abortion care. Yes, abortion care. Snuffing out kids all the way up until birth. How adorable. Kentucky's Yes for Life Amendment uh, 2 asks voters uh, to vote yes or no to a proposed amendment that states uh, to protect human life, nothing in this constitution shall be constructed to secure or protect a right to abortion or require the funding of abortion. So no money of the government can go directly to fund an abortion. There you go. That's, that's all that that one means. Okay, so marijuana legislation, five states, Arkansas, Maryland, Missouri, South Dakota, uh, and North Dakota. Dakota as well re uh, legalize adult recreational use of marijuana on November 8th uh, make it legal in nearly half of the 50 states yeah 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 New Hampshire oh I'm sorry uh, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures adults use of marijuana is currently legal in 19 states all 37 have legal medical marijuana programs yeah I guess as a painkiller it's better than opiates but then at the same time biting down on a leather belt is better or just, I don't know, fucking develop a pain tolerance, you pussies. Colorado, uh, where voters approved recreational marijuana in 2012, they will now be vo oh, they will be voting on Proposition 122, the Decriminalization and Regulated Access Programs for Certain Psychedelic Plants and Fungi Initiative. Great, wonderful, fantastic. As if downtown Denver wasn't degenerate enough. Slavery bans. What fucking year is this? Slavery may be banned under the United States Constitution. Oh, darn it. I can't fucking uh, just press gang anybody to working on my farm. To clear, uh, but apparently not in some states. No, I'm pretty sure that that was taken care of in the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. But all right, then. To clear that up, voters in Louisiana, Oregon, Tennessee, and Vermont. Fucking what? Okay. Will be asked to remove involuntary servitude in Louisiana and slavery, Oregon, Tennessee, and Vermont, as punishment for crime in their constitutions. Ooh, that could be interesting. Because, again, that'll take some legal challenges. Um... Because how would you, you could creatively define prison as being slavery. 
Very interesting. Very interesting. I guess uh, because you would just normally associate that with the old ball and chain, the old chain gang working on ditches on the side of the highways. (sighs) It's interesting. It's kind of interesting. Crime. All right. Alabama's Amendment Number 1 and Ohio Issue 1 both propose tightening bail requirements based on Missouri Amendment 4 would allow the state legislature to require that cities increase police funding without state reimbursement. Yeah, so instead of spending your fucking money on stupid pride flags that change every goddamn year, fund better cops, better fucking training. Hire cops to look like me, 6'6", six, six, two and some change, and just have a terrible fucking disposition on life. I want those for cops, okay? Not some of these pussy fucking diversity hires that are shaped like a tea kettle. Fuck off. Taxes. All right, cool. I like this stuff. It's boring as hell, but I appreciate it. Among varied proposals, three Louisiana. A lot of shit's going to be on this fucking Louisiana battle or ballot, sorry. And two Georgia measures seek property tax exemptions for the elder, elderly, disabled, and veteran, veterans da, 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 for timber equipment and in disaster areas. So, what the fuck? Property tax exemptions and timber exemptions or timber equipment and disaster areas yeah no that seems like a good group okay that, that yeah I'd be, I'd be down with that but that's just me should be for everybody as well huh. taxes theft um idaho voters will see proposed income tax or and corporate tax changes on all potatoes and in colorado two proposed uh, income tax reductions are on the ballot including proposition 121 the state income tax uh, reduction initiative a rate reduction initiative yeah get rid of all state income tax in colorado that's interesting oh my god what's california doing oh jesus this is gonna be stupid isn't it uh california's prop 30 would impose a tax on income of more than 2 million for of course tax are rich right and that's why they continue to flee your fucking state for zero emission vehicles and wildfire prevention initiative no just do brush cleanup okay and you stop having wildfires you fucking mongoloids well massachusetts question one asks voters to approve a tax on income of more than a million dollars for education and transportation improvements fuck massachusetts man I'll just say the Zarnoff brothers um, missed the mark back in the cut. Uh, Arizona's Proposition 132 seeks to require 60% supermajority to approve any ballot measures that increase the taxes. That's why Arizona's so fucking based. Minimum wage. Oh boy, here we go. Nebraska and Nevada voters uh, will see proposed constitutional amendments addressing minimum wages. Nebraska's interesting because it's going through a bit of a transition you know not like lopping off dicks or anything like that but they're it's odd it's odd over there and then nevada it's kind of just all run by unions so how many people are actually getting paid minimum wage in nevada Uh, it'd be interesting because again you want to fuck around with that shit and then if you're going to be forcing all of the servers to make minimum wage hmm I'll be very interesting about what happens with tips afterwards. Like that's a that's a precarious and for er, proposition. And again, well, I can see what they're doing here. Okay, so Nebraska's initiative one thirty three would increase the state's current uh, nine dollar minimum wage to fifteen dollars. Oh, okay, cool. I thought it was going up to nine dollars an hour, and it's like that's fine. But fifteen dollars an hour by January first, twenty twenty six. Yeah, how about no? How about no? because i'd have to see a breakdown but then again at the same time a minimum wage job is not supposed to be the fucking be all end all that's supposed to be a launching point nevada's question number two would increase the state's current 950 to 12 dollars an hour interesting hmm. now because mostly the people that live in nevada they just kind of center in two places okay in las vegas and reno and they're all working at casinos or at least the gambling related facilities or tour house related facilities. They're making more than $12 an hour or even nine fifty an hour. So that would just be more or less irrelevant, really. In Illinois, oh great. <laughs> Instead of a minimum wage increase, everybody gets flak jackets to walk around. Uh, voters will see Amendment 1, the right to collective bargaining measure. Oh, great, to just institutionalize unions. How adorable. While the voters in Tennessee, a right to work amendment based is on the ballot. Hell yeah. Again, Illinois just continues to be a 
fucking disaster. Elections and campaign finance. All right, seven measures across six states. Michigan's proposal to the right to fund Gretchen Whitmer's campaign with all of the money in the state's coffers. Oh no, I'm sorry. Right to voting policies amendment will redu- uh, would reduce uh, the requirements for legal voting. Oh, great. I just show up and say that your name's on the roll. It doesn't really much matter. We won't check, and we'll just ask you how many ballots you'd like. And Connecticut's Connecticut's proposed uh, allow for early voting amendment. How about no? Would allow for early voting in the state if approved. No! Should be voting day. It's election day, not week, month, year. We'll get around to it. There are three election integrity measures on the ballot. Uh, Arizona's Prop 309, the voter identification requirement for mail-in ballots and in-person voting measure, fucking based. Uh, Nebraska's initiative, 4321. And the voter, uh, the photo voter identification initiative, fucking based. See, Nebraska's, hey man, on both sides there. They're, one thing's good, one thing's bad, okay? So, it measures out right now. The Ohio issue number two, a citizen of voting requirement amendment. Ohio, Nebraska, and Arizona, once again, being based. Petition rules. Oh, what the fuck are we talking about here? Uh, Arkansas's issue two would require 60% supermajority to adopt ballot measures. California, or Colorado, sorry, same thing. Uh, proposition GG, weird, would require that income tax effects, okay, be included in initiative analysis and Arizona's props, uh, 128, 129, tighten the language and title requirements when it comes to imposing restrictions on citizens' initiative processes. Okay. In regards to elections or suing, like, okay, weird. States constitutional conventions, voters in three states will be asked if they want to adopt delegates to a convention to revise and amend their state's constitution. Ooh, here's where it gets, this, this shit gets a little bit more dry, but it's also fairly important, okay, among... There are among 14 states in the state's constitution uh, mandates that measure to oh, presented uh, to voters at stipulated intervals. In Alaska and New Hampshire, the constitutional convention question must be asked every 10 years. In Missouri, it must be asked every 20. Yeah, you guys still want to be a part of the union? Yeah, okay. Uh, state governments. All right. Arizona voters will be asked if they want to create a lieutenant governor's office. They don't have one. That's interesting. Okay. It seems like they've been functioning well without it. It just seems like additional government. So Arizona could be a little bit iffy on that. In Arkansas and Idaho, proposals would allow the state legislature to call a special session without the governor's assent. Interesting. I don't know why you'd want that. But uh, also, yeah, Arkansas does have Governor Asa Hutchinson for right now. So you could see if the governor, er, yeah, if the governor is just going to be a little bit wishy-washy, but if the state Congress wants to have a special session, I could see that helping. That could be, that could be handy. I don't know why. Yeah, that's not there in the first place because the governor's not a king after all. Michigan and North Dakota voters will be asked if they want to impose term limits on state. Yes, it should already be done. And North Dakota, the governor. Oh, okay, good. Uh, the measure tightening residency requirements for state legislatures is on the Maryland ballot. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. All right, sports betting. Let's roll the dice on this one. <laughs> Ugh. According to the American Gambl- or Gaming Association, the AGA, 33 states have legalized sports betting since the United States Supreme Court gave the states the authority to regulate such wagering in 2018. With the boom of online mobile sports betting, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. California voters see two proposed constitutional amendments seeking to legalize sports wagering uh, with tax reno- or revenues or betting being put towards addressing homelessness and mental illness. Capitalizing on addiction for to help mental illness okay uh the tribal sports wagering act sponsored by a 40 tribe coalition uh spent about 25 million dollars promoting policy see where their money uh lies and the california solutions to homelessness and mental health support act you can roll the dice in a casino or rather roll the dice on the rams and charger game but uh, don't roll the dice on depression unless you can uh, tease the spread a bit is backed by seven sports books, including FanDuel, DraftKings, yeah, 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 all that fucking garbage shit. I'm personally against it, but again, whatever people want to do with their fucking money, hey man. At the end of the day, it just is less competition for me. In exchange for the last $500 million per year deal, it gives, oh, the Seminoles, oh right, uh, the Seminole Tribe. 
actually a pretty base tribe because they don't give a fuck that Florida State University is like, we like your guys' warrior spirit. Can we use your name for our uh, sports teams? He's like, yeah, that's cool. A hard rock and digital platform exec or exclusive control of blackjack, craps, fantasy, and sports betting at its seven casinos and non-tribal parmutals. Par parmutals? Whatever. I'm such a fucking normie when it comes to casinos. I've been there, oh, a handful of times. I shouldn't just fucking cap when it comes to that stuff. But uh, as of right now, and I have no intentions of really ever going back. So I think it's just all degenerate shit. I'm actually up lifetime wise played slots a couple of times and walked away with like a couple hundred dollars like nothing serious no serious fucking wins or anything like that and scratch tickets are stupid in the fucking lotto you might as well just stick the coins up your ass but that's what's going to be on the ballots sports betting states government uh, governments abortion minimum wage taxes and slavery all right cool Realistically, it sounds like a, a Democrat's wet dream. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.